Okay class, today we're in lesson 2.7, solve proportions using cross products. 2.7, solve proportions using cross products. Before, you solve proportions using the multiplication property of equality. Now you will solve proportions using cross products. Key vocabulary, cross product, scale drawing, scale model, and scale. In a proportion, a cross product is the product of the numerator of one ratio and the denominator of the other ratio. The following property involving cross products can be used to solve proportions. The following property involving cross products can be used to solve proportions. Key concept, cross products property, words. The cross products of a proportion are equal. Example, 3 to 4 is equal to 6 to 8. 3 times 8 is equal to 24. 6 times 4 is equal to 24. Or you can read it as 4 times 6 is equal to 24. 3 times 8 is equal to 24. Notice that we're using cross products. That is, we're literally going to cross here, cross there. Hence, that's where the name comes from, cross products. So, you're going from here to there, and then from there to there. So, in essence, you're making a cross. Algebra. If A is to B, equals C to D where B cannot be 0 and D cannot be 0 then A times D A times D is equal to B times C B times C the proportion 3 over 4 is equal to 6 over 8 can be written as 3 is to 4 is equal to 6 to 8 in this form, 4 and 6 are called the means of the proportion, and 3 and 8 are called the extremes of the proportion. This is why the cross product property is also called means extremes property. This is why the cross product property is also called the means extreme property. Example 1. Use the cross product property. Solve the proportion 8 divided by x is equal to 6 divided by 15. Write the original proportion 8 divided by x is equal to 6 over 15. Cross product property, we're going to apply that now. So we're going to say 8 times 15, and they express it for you right there to be sure you understand it. 8 times 15 is equal to x times 6 or you can write it as 6 times x but x times 6 once again to express it to you so you can see it now you're going to simplify 8 times 15 is 120 x times 6 is 6x okay now you're going to solve for x so divide each side by 6 so here you divide by 6 and here you divide by 6 6 divided by 6 is 1, so you're left with just x. 120 divided by 6 is 20. x is equal to 6. Notice, they're no longer showing you the in-between step. Once again, what used to be an entire lesson is now a step. So once again, you have to know that you are dividing here by 6, and you are dividing here by 6. So, the solution is 20. Check by, substitute, by substituting 20 for x in the original proportion. So if you were to take 20 and put it back in the uh, original proportion, you would come out with 8 over 20 is equal to 6 over 15. Then you would cross multiply. So you're going to get 8 times 15, that's that. 20 times 6, that's that. 8 times 15 is 120. 20 times 6 is 120. So, that means that the answer checks out. 
Example 2. Standardized test practice. What is the value of x in the proportion 4 divided by x is equal to 8 divided by x minus 3? a negative 6, b negative 3, c 3, or d 6? Solution. Write the original uh, proportion. 4 over x is equal to 8 over x minus 3. Cross multiply. Now here you want to be careful because here when you, when you cross multiply you're going to end up applying the distributive property. But it's the same thing as in, as in example 1. Alright here we go. Alright first we're going to say 4 times x minus 3. 4 times x minus 3. They write this out to be sure you understand it. 4 times x minus 3 and that's going to equal x times 8 x times 8 x times 8 once again they express it so you can see it to be sure you understand it we're going to simplify now when we simplify first we're going to use the distributive property 4 times x is 4x 4 times a negative 3 is a negative 12 4 times a negative 3 is a negative 12. x times 8 is 8x. Now we're going to subtract 4x from each side. So here, because I have variables on both sides, I don't put all, all my variables on one side and I move the smallest variable. In this case it's the positive 4x. So I'm going to say minus 4x here and minus 4x there minus 4x here and minus 4x there. 4x minus 4x goes to 0 so I'm left with a negative 12. 8x minus 4x is equal to 4x. So now I have a negative 12 is equal to 4x. Negative 12 is equal to 4x. What must I do next? Divide each side by 4 to get this x by itself because I read this as 4 times x well what's the opposite or what's the inverse of times that's going to be division so now I divide both sides by 4 divide both sides by 4 negative 12 divided by 4 is a negative 3 and 4x divided by 4 the 4's are going to cancel and I'm left with just x so my final answer is x is equal to a negative 3 so the value of x is a negative 3. The correct answer is B. Alright now for those, for those of us who may be confused or don't recall our steps to solving an equation with variables on both sides we're going to pick up from right here after we apply the cross products property right here. Alright so we got 4x minus 12 is equal to 8x. Our x's have to be on the same side and our rule is we move the smaller x. So between 4x and 8x, which is smaller, it's the 4x. Alright, so now, what is the opposite of a positive 4x? That's a negative 4x. When I do to one side, I must also do to the other side. So 4x minus 4x, that's going to cancel out. That's gone. I'm left with a negative 12 is equal to 8x minus 4x. 8x minus 4x is 4x. So now I have a negative 12 is equal to 4x. I want to get this x by itself. It says 4 times x. So what's the opposite or the inverse of multiplication? Division. So I divide both sides by 4. 4 here and 4 there. My 4's are going to cancel out because 4 divided by 4 is 1. So that's gone and I'm left with just 1x. A negative 12 divided by 4 is a negative 3. Example 3. Write and solve a proportion. Seals. Each day, the seals at an aquarium are each fed 8 pounds of food for every 100 pounds of their body weight. A seal at the aquarium weighs 280 pounds. How much food should the seal be fed per day? Solution. Step 1. 
Write a proportion involving two ratios that compare the amount of food with the weight of the seal. So, amount of food, 8, is to the weight of the seal, 100. So, 8 pounds of food for every 100 pounds of their body weight. So, 8 to 100. Alright, now we have a seal at the aquarium that weighs 280 pounds. So, weight of the seal goes on the bottom because that's where the pounds are. And the amount of food, we don't know, so that's X. So, once again, our proportion is 8 is to 100, the same as X is to 280. Step 2, solve the proportion. Write the proportion. 8 is to 100 as X is 280. We're going to apply our cross product property. So, we're going to get 8 times 280 and then 100 times X. Simplify. 8 times 280 is 2240. 100 times X is 100X. We're going to divide each side by 100 because we're solving for X. 100 times X, what's the opposite or the inverse of division? Excuse me, of multiplication, it's going to be division. So divide by 100 here and divide by 100 here. After doing so, 2240 divided by 100 will give you 22.4. 100X divided by 100 will leave you with just x. 100 divided by 100 is 1, so you're left with 1x. So, a 280-pound seal should be fed 22.4 pounds of food per day. Scale drawings and scale models. The floor plan below is an example of a scale drawing. A scale drawing is a two-dimensional drawing of an object in which the dimensions of the drawings are in proportion to the dimensions of the object. A scale model is a three-dimensional model of an object in which the dimensions of the model are in proportion to the dimensions of the object. The scale of a scale drawing or a scale model relates to drawings or models dimensions and the actual dimensions. For example, the scale 1 inch to 12 feet as indicated here, 1 inch to 12 feet on the floor plan means that 1 inch in the floor plan represents an actual distance of 12 feet. Example 4. Use the scale on a map. Maps. Use a metric ruler and the map of Ohio to estimate the distance between Cleveland and Cincinnati. Solution. From the map scale, that's the scale right there, one centimeter represents 85 kilometers. On the map, the distance between Cleveland and Cincinnati is about 4.2 centimeters. So they measure it from Cleveland to Cincinnati using a ruler. Write and solve a proportion to find the distance D between the cities. Alright, so now we're going to set up our proportion. We look at the scale. One centimeter, centimeters on top, corresponds to 85 kilometers. When we measured the distance from Cleveland to Cincinnati, that came out to be 4.2 centimeters. So, 4.2 centimeters is to how many kilometers? We don't know. That's what we're trying to find. So, now we got everything set up. 1 is to 85. The same as 4.2 is to D. We're going to cross multiply. 1 times D is, excuse me, 1 times D, and it represented it for you, 1 times D. Then we got 85 times 4.2. They wrote that for you to be sure you understand. Now, what is 1 times D? That's D. 85 times 4.2 is 357. So, the actual distance between Cleveland and Cincinnati is about 357 kilometers. Concludes today's lesson.